Hey guys and welcome back to the Courageous Nerd YouTube channel for another interview. I'm Connor and joining me today is Martin Copping to chat all about playing Riggs in the new Call of Duty video game Call of Duty Vanguard. If you enjoyed this interview with us on the channel please be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> Uh, so welcome, Martin, and thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you, Connor. It's good to be here, mate. Absolutely. And obviously, um, we'll be ma mainly talking about your voice role as uh, Lucas Riggs for Call of Duty Vanguard. But before we kind of get into that directly, uh, just from speaking to actors, not many kind of had that uh, career path in mind when they were like really young. So was, it, was it always a path you wanted to take? Or like, did you ever see yourself doing anything else? Yeah, no, in terms of... Uh... Being a voice actor, it was never really something that I'd kind of, you know, planned on doing or even thought about. Yeah, um, it was it was more a byproduct of when I was uh, in a drama school back in Australia. Um, mm. I started doing some work for ABC Radio, which is the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Okay, and I did uh, I did poetry readings and I did some radio plays, um, and then that moved more into commercial work, and then yeah, eventually ended up with with uh peak you know peak app and voice work in gaming but i was mainly a uh, film tv and theater actor mm. uh up until you know well i, st I still am primarily mm. um but luckily I've, I've kind of made that transition into gaming as well which is a very exciting uh area to be working in for me yeah absolutely and obviously speaking of like exciting i don't think it can get much bigger than call of duty as far as like a franchise to be like working on and I suppose, and like, how would you set up the premise for Vanguard for anyone who might be unfamiliar? And like, how would you kind of say it stands out compared to the previous games? Yeah, I mean, the, I haven't played all of all of the Call of Duty. Oh, so I actually, sure. I, yeah, I worked on Infinite Warfare as well, which was a yeah. you know a space take. Um, but yeah, Vanguard's it's set in World War Two, and essentially, it's the the birth of you know COD's birth of of special forces, mm. um, where they've assumed this. Uh, team of experts in their own field uh, to take on a, a deadly enemy uh, during the World War II period. So it was the, the character I play, Lucas Riggs, is the explosives guy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I used to I used to fall around making little mini matchbox bombs and stuff mm. as a kid. So mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I always had fun with that sort of stuff growing up. It was all very harmless. But, um, yeah, I think the character of Riggs is, you know, he's very interesting to me because of those reasons. For sure. And I actually haven't had a chance to play the game yet, so you might have to correct me if I'm wrong with this bit of information, but I believe it's Riggs, like yourself, Australian, right? Yeah, he yeah. is. So uh, I suppose then for you, like, what does it mean to be able to play an Australian character in, a, in a, what I think is a very, you know, I think intrinsically American media franchise? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm really excited that, uh, you know, that the COD universe is... is you know broad enough that that we can have a, an aussie in it as i said mm. i haven't played all of the other ones so i'm not yeah. really sure if there have been other australian characters but um mm. i think no they have i think there's a character called wyatt yeah um, yeah i think so modern warfare that a friend of mine um a friend of mine voiced actually mm -hmm. but uh yeah it is it is exciting and i've done quite a few uh war movies i've done a world war one film and a, okay. and a Vietnam film world war one film i played an englishman and the, the Vietnam I played a an American so it was mm. you know it's great to play someone from Australia and um obviously the, you know people really honor and celebrate the Anzacs uh which are the Australia and New Zealand marine mm. uh, uh what are they called uh, um basically the armed forces sure, uh, army, sure. army army corps um and yeah it I, for me it's it's a, a real honor to you know Rep represent them in mm. in such like you said such a big franchise yeah and maybe it might depend on the actor and depend on the project but would you like generally prefer to be playing like an aussie or like would you kind of prefer to be like delving deep into a different accent and kind of uh like mask, mask your uh, real real self i guess my own identity yeah, yeah look i uh i sort of for the majority of my career when i was younger i did a lot of character work uh sure. and a lot of a lot of different accent work, um, which I really, really enjoy, you know, losing myself in characters that are, are far removed from who I am mm. um, and experimenting with with accents. I think some people 
uh, have a tendency and an, and an ear where they can adapt to different accents. And I, I think I, you know, luckily fall into that category. Um, but I find when I'm doing Australian work, I can, you know, focus more on the physicality of the character and, um, I won't say not do as much research into the, you know, vernacular and the language sure. that he's using, okay. but, um, it, you know, it comes a little bit more naturally. So I probably spend more time on the, on the physicality and the psychology than necessarily really trying to, because if I'm, if I'm doing accent work, I want to get yeah. good, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I believe actually the game Vanguard is already out. Uh, it came out uh, earlier this month as of when we were recording this. And I suppose, yeah. them, uh, uh, obviously, from what you know, having recorded your voice, like what are you most excited for players to experience? Um, so I've played, uh, I've played the campaign. Right. And I've done a little bit of the multiplayer, uh, Champion Hill, and I'm about to delve into, into the zombies area of the game but mm -hmm. i guess you know i i mean I, I put a lot of research into into the character that i was portraying and yeah um and i'm, I'm just excited for people to to experience Riggs. i think he's a really interesting layered character um he's exciting and he's explosive and um and the dialogue that was written for for Riggs is just it's hilarious you know he's mm. That's got a lot of you know Australian colloquialisms and um, and most of his dialogue is laced with an underlying sense of humour, which I think a lot of Australians have, and I'm I'm just excited for people to get to experience that and and spend some time with an Aussie because you know generally I think Aussies when you when you travel and you bump into an Aussie they're a bit of fun you know mm. I I guess as long as you don't uh, mistake them for a Kiwi right then it might be a bit less fun. Yeah, I mean, I think it, 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 yeah, it depends where you come from. If you're an Australian mm. and you get mistaken by for a Kiwi, mm. it, you know, and vice versa. But right. uh, I think it's, I think it's a healthy rivalry, and I think, you know, when push comes to shove, the Aussies and New Zealand would definitely, uh, New Zealanders would definitely come together and look after each other. And um, you know, I've got a lot of New Zealand uh, friends, mm. and um, there, there are a lot of similarities. I think we're very, very similar to each other, and. For sure, yeah, but you don't, you don't want to get you don't want to get those two mixed up. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not, definitely not. The spark, uh, the sparks will fly. Yeah, um, I, I suppose though, obviously, uh, just to clarify what you said, I know you, you said you haven't played a lot of like the the COD games. Like, do you play many games in general, or you're just not as familiar with with those? Yeah, well, I uh, growing up, I always played a lot of video games. You know, I grew up. Yeah, the the, the first things I was playing was like on a pong on a magnavox and sure. you know i don't know if you remember that i don't know if you've even heard of it but it's where you basically you had to wire the unit into the back of your tv twisting right. wires it okay. was so old that was in the i think that came out in 77 right so i had dad had bought one of those and introduced me to gaming at a very early age and then progressed to sega master system and you know super nintendo and um and Game Boy and and then I, and I did that for a long time. I was a PC gamer back with the mm. two eight six PCs. Sure. And uh, and then I, I think when I you know I went to drama school uh, when I was you know fresh out of high school and I think around that time I was so focused on my film and television career and um I, I would I would start feeling guilt for taking time off to play games. I was just really focused and always you know, yeah. writing and trying to develop projects and going out and auditioning and what have you. And then um, funnily enough, maybe three three or four years ago, you know, my friend, the one who uh, voices Wyatt, sure. was a big, big gamer and he, he loved it. And he's like, you got to relax, mate. You're always working so hard. You know, there's nothing wrong with having some fun and playing some games. And he, he was right. I went out and bought yeah. a Nintendo Switch. I've actually got it right here. Oh, nice. And, uh, I got uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild and I just got lost in it. And after yeah. that, you know, I, I've, I fell in love with gaming again. And then I, I did the Rainbow Six mm. uh, game where, where I played another Aussie mozzie. Yeah. And, uh, and then I really started getting involved in it again and started streaming it on Twitch. And, and now, you know, I play yeah. everything I can get my hands on. I'm, I'm back in the swing of things, you know. Mm. I mean, uh, just from the sounds of it, I guess you've got a good friend there. Inadvertently, kind of getting you back into that world. 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's been it's been it's been an interesting you know journey to sort of delve back into gaming. It was something mm. I loved, you know, getting immersed in those lands. Like Alex, I don't know if you've ever played Alex the Kid in Miracle World. It was an old Sega game, but right. I just remember having some of the fondest times of my life coming home from school and mm. and getting lost in that universe. Um, and I'm glad I'm glad that I'm doing it again. You know, yeah. And I suppose that just from like you know a general perspective, anyone who plays any like these of these um like recent games, obviously, obviously you can see like the graphics and how uh well I guess how, how beautiful it looks, how how like um realistic and lifelike. But I suppose yeah. that having worked on games, like when you come across you know games you know on that level, like do you have a different kind of appreciation or kind of context of looking at it, just from uh, having been on on the other side? If that makes sense. Yeah, it does absolutely. I, I mean, they've come. Obviously, they've come so far from when mm. I was first aiming with you know pong with two paddles and a ball on a yeah. I think it was a eight bit or four bit screen. Um, to now, you know, the cinematics are they're breathtaking. Mm. You know, they're almost like uh, you know beyond lifelike. Um, yeah. and I'm I'm really excited for for where gaming is going and the immersion that you can have. And um, I think the most exciting thing for me is whereas cinema, which, you know, I'm a huge cinephile, sure. um, is a beautiful immersive experience. It's also very passive. Mm. Um, you know, you sit down and, and you're a voyeur in this, you know, these other characters' worlds, whereas gaming, it's, it's an active thing that you participate in, you know. Yeah. And I think when the cinematics have gotten to the level where they are now and they're just going to keep getting better. Mm. Um, you feel like you're there. Yeah, you know? for sure. And, I mean, to me, it's, it's just it's such a gift because there's a lot of people in the world, you know, who aren't fortunate enough to be able to travel or, or mm. see different parts of the world. But if, if you can get in front of a console yeah. and, a, and, a, and a good enough screen, you, could, you know, you can really go there and, and you can experience you know, mm. I mean, we're seeing it happen now with, you know, the metaverse. You can experience a, anything, and yeah. I think that's a, that's a beautiful thing. As long as you know, you remember that we're still in a an actual world. Mm. Um, yeah, it's really cool. So no, I'm I'm really excited for you know where where the graphics and 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 the immersion are, are headed. Yeah, uh, and I think this game in particular, Vanguard, it's it it is breathtaking. You know, mm. it's just beautiful. Like I'm so impressed by what what the team have done yeah i mean it's a really interesting point you bring up there and i know you said you're not as familiar so you might not know like about this uh this particular kind of thing i know in one of the earlier games like two of the maps were hanoi and um, yeah hanoi and havana which are obviously big cities in vietnam and cuba and later yeah. on years after playing that game i actually visited both of those places so it's kind of a weird wow. backwards thing about knowing them oh yeah this was a map in but whichever COD game that was, but obviously to actually get to be in the place for real, you know, and yeah. obviously kind of like match up to how it looked in the game. I mean, I, I definitely um, kind of understand what you were going for. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it is. It's quite extraordinary. My friend, uh, Jonathan Buckley, who, who was the voice of Wyatt in Modern mm. Warfare, he uh, used to do a show called Translogic where he'd fly, he'd get flown around the world. He was hosting it and he'd, basically drive supercars right and um I, th I don't know if it was a norberg ring or one of the it was i think it was actually in italy one of the tracks you know he learned it on um what's the car what's a really popular car game um oh. grand turismo, i think it was around her daughter no it was like grand turismo or something but oh. he learned he learned the track okay. on play and went over there and got some ridiculous time doing the circuit and they're like how the hell did you do that mm. and he said Play playstation you know mm. on playstation i have another friend of mine who's you know he's de uh developing programs with a virtual reality company to uh teach cooking mm. um and it's all vr it's virtual and you can learn all the skills not you know risk hurting yourself not slow down yeah. the kitchen you know, you, you learn in a virtual world and it's it's super exciting, you know. And mm. like you said, imagine traveling to that to that new city. Mm. If 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 you can't get there, or like you did, 
then you get there and you're like, oh my God, I know this place. Yeah. For you sure. know, I think with learning languages and what have you, I think the sky's the limit. You know, I think yeah. it's really going to society progress a lot. Absolutely. And I know, to, uh, obviously, to change uh, topic, change tack a little bit, obviously, you mentioned that your background as well as in like uh, film, TV, and theatre. And obviously, there's inherent differences. You know, that kind of goes without saying to making any of those compared to making. Uh, a video game but what do you most enjoy about those differences and uh, the uniqueness that comes with making a video game yeah I mean I I think um some of the areas where you know film let's just use film as an example um differs differs from uh performance in a in a game like doing performance capture is a film you know generally not always and more and more i think with marvel and some of the bigger more uh cgi heavy games mm. you know you're working green screens yeah. but for uh for gaming you, you know you're working on what we call a volume which is a big grid in a sound stage right and the whole thing's surrounded by a bunch of cameras and you're wearing you know we've all seen them i think on little instagram videos behind the right. scenes thing you know the mocap suits which are like yeah. a little wetsuit with the little balls or little silver balls all over them that are reflective and they pick up the camera mm-hmm. and uh and then you have the dots all over your face and then a headgear yeah. with cameras to you know to uh to capture your, your facial performance and so that that like physically is a, in itself a, a big difference to being in wardrobe and costume and for example mm. doing a war you know the war movies that i've done yeah you, you you're you're you know troping through the jungle and you're wearing the camo and you've got you know you've got big heavy guns um and and if it's hot it's hot you know whereas Mm. the the pcap stuff it's a very controlled environment um you know you're not worried about if it's going to start raining or if you're going to lose light um and i find that removing that as sort of the risk of the elements negatively yeah. interfering with a suit or with a shoot it's it's definitely a benefit um mm. and it's nice to know that you're in a temperature controlled environment and you're going to be comfortable and it's not a long walk when you're off the volume to just sit in a chair and, and relax and essentially be in a green room um in terms of actually how it perfects and it affects a performance yeah um i think you just need to use your imagination a little bit more Mm. um you know whereas if you if you're in the jungle for example and sure. you know you're in a fight you, you legit feel like you're there but that's a, one thing that surprised me i guess a bit about performance capture is a little bit of an imagination you feel mm. like you're there i mean i think that's why performance yeah. artists do what they do because they can get to that place in their own head and and fully immerse themselves in it um so yeah that that there's some of the sort of subtle differences, but um, I think when it comes to the actual performance, you know, you're always having to convince yourself that it's real and, and get yeah. lost in a moment, whatever character and and storyline, you know, you're a part of. Yeah, I mean, just to, um, I, you know, just from like, uh, my own perspective, imagining like on like a period project, I would guess like putting on that clothing might help, you know, kind of help you get into that mindset or into that moment. But with wearing the motion capture suit, Kind of have like, like a similar effect, or does it kind of is it? I mean, does it uh, feel a bit more ridiculous to be wearing it? Kind of having to wrap your head around what you're supposed to be doing, more so than um, if you were like kind of uh, had more of a physical in- sense. Yeah, well, I think you're absolutely right. I do think yeah. you know, getting fully dressed up in in whether it's a period piece or just a business suit, depending on right. what character you're playing. Absolutely, it. I think it definitely helps. Um, you know, to put you in that mental space of, you know, I am playing a character and, and this is the character and you you would feel how the character would walk. If you're wearing a suit, you're going to feel a lot different than, you know, wearing shorts and a T-shirt. Mm. Whereas in the, uh, I think in the, uh, when you're on the volume, you, you've, you're in control of how you walk. If you're meant to be in a suit, you have to pretend you're wearing a suit, you walk like you're in a suit. So sure. you need to be more diligent. I think with your physicality, mm. um, because the the you, your costume and your wardrobe isn't necessarily going to dictate, you know, your movements. Mm. Um, so yeah, that, that's another. It's an interesting one. That's another subtle difference. And I, but I think the more time you spend on the volume, you know, the more cognitive you get of it. And um, yeah, you know, it, I think it just when you've had a little bit of experience on the volume, your imagination gets you there. And, 
Yeah. Yeah, you just focus yeah. on a little bit more. I mean, uh, just to wrap this up, actually, with my um, with my last question, and uh, I apologise, you know, lightheartedly for dropping this on you at the end, but I, as Sorry. we look ahead to to 2022, like, what are you most excited to, I guess, accomplish or like look towards in the coming months? Yeah, well, I've got a throughout COVID, I was building a little uh, 2D platform game, okay. which is almost finished. Uh, I'm really excited to play that and and get it out and share it with people it's it was just more a little passion project i don't i don't think it's gonna change the world of gaming um but I, yeah i'm just you know i'm quite proud of that that you know that i, I went down that that path and then I, I also just finished uh production and post-production on my first feature film that i've oh, written and directed wow, called okay. the dunes congrats yeah and that's uh thank you very much it's it's been a long you know a long process uh and i'm really really happy with with how it's turned out and we're running festival circuits at the moment and um just looking into sales and distribution trying to make decisions on you know where to place it yeah and then uh yeah i'm looking looking at my next film so mm. in pre-production on that and planning when to strike like the like the serpent would <laughs> you know yeah yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, obviously, best of luck with Vanguard and with everything else that's, you know, in, in your future near and far and, uh, you know, all the best and take care and stay safe. Oh, thank you so much, Connor. It's been great talking to you.